The Legend of Zelda Sealed Palace is the biggest ROM hack of Ocarina of Time ever made. I had this recommended to me at least once with someone praising its quality and duration and after playing it, I am very surprised that I didn't get more requests. This is incredible. Even though OOT mods are far more ubiquitous today than they were even just a couple of years ago, I am always surprised whenever I see a really quality one come out. I think it's because the process of modding this game specifically isn't as straightforward as something like Mario. The gameplay loop is far more elaborate and depends on a very specific predetermined sequence of events. People who design these games have to do a lot more work to ensure that the game can't just break itself by accident. There are far more vectors for failure in a game like this than there are in a game like Super Mario 64 and I feel like it must be terrifying to even attempt to make one because of that. So even the attempt deserves a bravo in my book. I think one of my favorite things about OOT is that even 25 years after release, whether I'm playing the vanilla version or a ROM hack, I learn a new thing about it every single time I pick it up. Just the other day I found out that you can actually freeze the blade traps using the ice arrows. By complete happenstance I saw a video on Twitter of someone doing this in the original game and as it turns out, you actually have to do that in this mod. Imagine how screwed I would have been if I didn't see that. Also, I forgot to get Din's fire before facing Shadow Link and accidentally discovered an effective strategy for beating him properly. If you lure him against a wall, wait for him to strike your shield, and then jump slash as soon as it recoils, you can actually hit him pretty consistently. I did this like 5 times in a row and now my playthroughs will never be the same. That's one of the most exciting things about these hacks, I almost always end up learning something I didn't know about the original game. But as to today's subject specifically, the too long didn't watch version of this video is basically, play this one. Now. Don't even wait, it's that good. I promise you that. This is an incredibly satisfying and beefy fan game with absurd production value and scale that almost rivals the original game. Now the first thing you're gonna notice about this hack is that it is big, really big. It might be in the running for the biggest Ocarina of Time hack ever made. It gets surprisingly close to the actual vanilla game. Three spiritual stones, six medallions, 900 sculptulas, heart pieces, arrows, upgrades, sizable dungeons. This is a huge game that does not end, and the only reason I am able to show you this much of it is because I started so early. I think if there's one thing that frustrated me about this hack, at least in the beginning, is that progression is often not as straightforward as many other OOT hacks that I played. But I guess it just makes sense that it'd be trickier to figure out where to go and what to do in a much bigger game, so it probably doesn't make sense to harp on that point too much. In fact, I could probably frame it as a positive thing because it reflects on how huge the game is. While I feel strongly that subjectivity is implicit in all of my reviews, I do want to reiterate that this is entirely subjective to me. I'm sure a lot of people will play this hack and never once get stuck because they're smarter than I am, and getting stuck isn't some objective flaw of the game, I mean I just got done playing Metroid Prime, right? Like I said before, it's a lot harder to make these kinds of hacks because the gameplay loop is fundamentally more complex than something like Mario 64, so it's pretty much the nature of the beast that you're probably gonna get stuck at some point. It's not the most obtuse thing in the world, not by a long shot, or a hook shot, but I had so many moments where I got stuck and then I remembered something from 300 years ago and figured that might be helpful now that I have the right equipment and then I go there and solve the puzzle just to immediately run into another snag and basically end up nowhere. Or I just get like a big chest with some rupees in it like the game is just making fun of me. Ooh, you thought you were making progress, but you just found some loose pocket change. <laughs> you think this is funny? You think I'm funny? This is serious. This is Zelda. The game also doesn't have a mini-map, meaning that I have to keep pausing to see where I am and where I'm going, even after finding the dungeon map and compass. I've seen other Zelda hacks have issues with the mini-map, so it's possible that this is just one of those things that's tricky to get working. If any of this sounds harsh or nitpicky, keep in mind that I actually reached the end credits of this game, which required a 20-hour playthrough, and considering the time-sensitive nature of the marathon, I did so at great risk of fumbling the whole thing. Considering these factors, the very fact that I felt such a strong compulsion to complete this game proves beyond any reasonable doubt that they did something very, very right.
Gameplay-wise, this is Ocarina of Time. Not just in the mechanics, but also the gameplay loop of talking to NPCs, figuring out where to go, and solving some clever puzzles. I think the puzzle solving in this game is great. If you're familiar with OOT, you'll probably be pretty up to speed with this one, but it does pull some tricky stuff, like how you're supposed to shoot this eyeball through a hole from a thousand meters away. It took me seven years to figure that out. While there aren't any new mechanics or tools in this mod, they did add some quality of life improvements to the game. The D-pad acts as hotkeys for some frequent otherwise cumbersome actions like the ocarina and more importantly swapping between iron boots and hover boots. In the game's more frustrating moments, these things are the saving grace and I am so glad that they added that feature. Graphically, the texture work is not that noticeably different from the original, but the world and level design is where the game really shines. The dungeons have a level of detail and nuance that could stand up to the original, and it even gets creative with fixed camera angles just to shake things up. This is especially effective in the Shadow Dungeon where you're walking through these narrow corridors almost making it look like Resident Evil. The dungeon designs are quite incredible, obviously taking inspiration from the vanilla game while also being different enough to be their own thing. I think the exact moment that I decided this was the best ROM hack ever made was when I got to this mansion area. You see this depressed man sitting on a bench in front of a pool of blood and on the other side of the room is a painting. When you approach it, the room is enveloped in thick red fog, and you are transported into a literal nightmare world. That was really trippy and a great leverage of the game's graphical effects, but that was only the beginning. There's a corridor within the nightmare world, and once you reach the halfway point, the room is shrouded in fog, and the corridor turns into this grotesque fleshy red passageway like Jabu Jabu's belly. While I've been very impressed by OOT ROM hacks in the past, this is something I don't think I've ever seen them do. It is incredibly powerful. There's also the Spirit Temple, which is just genius. You have to keep swapping between day and night to change the level around you, almost like Fungus Forest in Donkey Kong 64. The music contains a lot of alterations of existing songs from OOT, but also a lot of new stuff that really gives the impression of a bizarro Majora's Mask approach. The story is incredible. You start out in jail and learn that all the other Kokiri were imprisoned as well, and you don't know why. It's kind of messed up actually. These are all children that were taken from their homes and thrown in a cell. There's even a guard who recognizes you after the time skip and reveals that he was one of the guards who captured you and the others and is now an alcoholic because the guilt is destroying him. He even says the classic phrase, I was just following orders. Dude. Holy shit. The overarching narrative almost feels more like an alternate history version of Ocarina of Time rather than an additive piece of lore. It hits on many of the same story beats and a lot of dialogue and areas are rearranged and tweaked slightly, but it's carried by all the completely new stuff that bounces off of it harmoniously. Overall, the game is noticeably darker than the original, which already had its share of ghoulishness. There's even an area in the catacombs with an active guillotine with a blade going up and down. Look at this, they even got a bucket for the head. That's gnarly. Sealed Palace is a dramatic step up for OOT ROM hacks and an absolute triumph of fan game projects. The scope is super ambitious and absolutely blew me away on more than one occasion. Even without new mechanics and abilities, it stands as a phenomenal piece of work and makes me optimistic for the future of modding for this game. Now I really hope you guys are excited for tomorrow's video because as special as this game is, tomorrow's is really special. Merry Summer Cousins.